All right, today you got Avid and you got Mario and we have Mr. Walter Forrest, a, a brother, a friend, a cousin, um, a, a wise source of information, man, uh, someone that I really look up to, man, and appreciate. Um, and we're going to talk about the way he views life in Grand Bay and Mobile uh, around this country. And some things that, you know, we can do as people to make not just where he live and where he from, but we can make the world a better place. Mr. Walter Forrest. Yes, sir. I know you want me to give a speech, man. I appreciate you having me on. I know we've been trying to get together for, for a good little minute, man. So uh, I hope you're ready because you got me now, huh? <laughs> yeah, we're ready. We're ready. So let's go. Hey, you know what? Um, so Walter and I, man, we 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 family, right? We are Mose Lane, Red Clay, Dirt Road, Grand Bay, Alabama. Family uh have grown up together, went to school together. Uh, I mean for many a years, man. Uh and to the point, in fact, hey Walt, I want to go. I want to go and I want I want to talk about I want to talk about your grandmother. I want to start off with one of my favorite ladies from that area, man, that has yeah. that has meant so much to me in my upbringing. I want yeah. you to talk about your relationship with your grandmother. Man, you got to start off there, huh? Yeah, I want to yeah, I want to go there first. Hey, man. That 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 was my girl, man. You know what I'm saying, um, man. To take, you know, fourteen kids and, you know, basically raise them by yourself, and and then so I don't even know how many grandkids on top of that, man. But I you know when you when when I was little, you know what I'm saying. I you don't you don't really you know, understand, you know what I'm saying, what type of person you got to be to deal with, especially back then. You know what I'm saying. But man, once I got older, I kind of looked back and I'm like, man, you know, they keep talking about super women. You know what I'm saying? That was that was the first one I ever seen put the cape on, bro. You know what I'm saying? She she took care of us. I mean, sometimes it was a house full of grown men and kids, and and man, we always ate, we always had lights. I mean, boy, that she you you know how she was. She didn't play, <laughs> but but. But if, if if you was a family, bro, you could be somebody out there. You didn't even have to be family, man. If you walked up to her and told her you was hungry, she'd get in the kitchen to cook you some food. Now she she wasn't going to go in her purse and give you any money. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, yeah, she definitely, she definitely, man, if, if you were hungry and she had it, you had it too, man. And, and, you know what I'm saying? And that's what I try to, you know what I'm saying, incorporate in my life, man, because, you know what I'm saying, if, if it wasn't for her, Man, I wouldn't be sitting in front of. I wouldn't be on this call with you, bro, for real. So, so how did fourteen of y'all end up under under your grandmother's umbrella? Hey, man, it, it was hard times back in the day, man. Hard times. I mean, you know, it was me and my mom and my brother, my daddy. We was there at one point. My aunt and her kids was there, man. We was, man, we were sleeping in the bathtub on the stove. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, she just piled it in there, man. And, and then when it was time to eat, it's like everybody had full place, man. And he was like, you know, like, I don't, I don't know how she did it, bro. You know what I'm saying? I don't know how she did it, but, you know what I'm saying? I definitely owe a lot to where I'm at, you know, to my grandma. Right. That's right, man. Uh, all of our parents and our grandparents and great-grandparents Honestly, we do not fully understand what they dealt with. And the reason that I say that is because the era that they were born in, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, yeah. uh, and I, I'll tell a quick story, man, <clears throat> about your grandmother, man. She, uh, I remember I was a teenager and she had came down and she was talking to, uh, you know, to my grandmother mm -hmm. about, uh, you know, if I wanted to go and work with her. So yeah. one day we went over to uh it's kind of like you can 
I guess I, I don't know, use the word downtown, but really there's no downtown <laughs> brand. <laughs> On the other side of the tracks, that's that's yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. that's more fitting, yeah. right? Yeah. So we, we went we went on the other side of the tracks, right? And and uh, she was doing some work, and I was doing some work out in the yard and different things like that. Now uh, I'm gonna set this scene. We're talking about Grand Bay, Alabama, in the 1980s, right? We talking about in the 1980s, and unfortunately, some people that look like us. They don't want to talk about anything past the 90s. Or they don't, I'm not going to say they don't see the value, but they really don't understand it unless they spend time with their parents or grandparents and yeah. great-grandparents, and then they can talk and explain. But us three on this podcast today, we saw this. We mm -hmm. saw this in real life. But I remember... She helped with other families. Mm -hmm. she didn't, it wasn't just her family that she raised. It was other families, right? just like my grandma. Yep. But they did what they had to do to take care of us and feed us and, yeah. and our parents. And I, I, think, I thank God for your grandmother and your parents, my, mine and Amos and all, all of ours. Because they molded us into who we were. You know, man, I, I remember there's a lot of stories, man. We, we, we hey, Avid. You have to reset we, that time. Man, we, we, got a, we, got, we got a whole bunch of stories, man. I, <laughs> hey, I, I, can, I can tell you stories about being on that basketball court. Yeah. And then, yeah. you know, you got this, yeah. you, hey, hey, you got this, this, this little lady come walking down the road, man. Hey. With the switch. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man! I'm, I'm telling you, it was yeah, yeah. do it was do what I say when yeah. I said do it. People, you know, yeah, you, you know, and, 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 I mean, even no Marine Corps, you know, people say, "Hey, uh, do what I say and not what I do." No, yeah. How we was brought up was do what I say when I said do. It. In other words, if yeah. I say it right now, that's when you do it. That's yep. when you do it. That's when yep. you do it. And I'm thankful for that. Yeah. Man, and, and, and t listening to you to the stories, like it's, it, it seems, uh, and I say, what your grandmother was was one of those community leaders, a pillar, and she lived by that same, like people from that generation that was born, and we we had the privilege of of being uh, products of. They truly, uh, they truly honed that community yeah. uh, upbringing. It's like the, yeah. the village raises the child, the village yeah. takes care of each other. Because you are a community in itself, so like yeah. like your grandmother yeah. did for for Mario right down the street. My grandparents did the same thing, you know, because yeah. that's exactly what they were taught, and that's how they were. And and that community thing uh, is looking out for everybody, not just yourself. Uh, as, as like bringing everybody together, and everybody rises together instead of yeah. you know I'm gonna take care of me, and that's it. You know, I mean, exactly. I, I, I mean, I'm not worried about nobody else. The, the products that you get out of you know, putting that type of emphasis into building a community and being present in other people's lives uh, and, and yeah. basically blessing other people because you may be more fortunate or you just you just care more that you just you see somebody in need like that. That is something that we truly as a as a as a world in the country need to get back to. Yeah, um, I, I think we could solve so many things by treating people as part of the community and, re, and, and using outreach like that. Yeah. So how many other lives did, you, did your grandmother affect other than just you and Mario? You know yeah. what I mean? How, how many other kids in the neighborhood did she actually impart, you know what I mean, kindness on or discipline yeah. on and, yeah. and didn't do stuff because they saw her over there like <laughs> and playing with her? Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like, I'm not for it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was a different time back then, man. It's like, you know, you, you'd almost rather you know your parents catch you doing something themselves and before you talk <laughs> somebody else calling your parents and man I caught your son because now you embarrassing them you know that, that exactly that, that whooping that whooping is a little worse when somebody called you when somebody had to call him and tell them but it, it was just it was just like it was just a respect thing man it's different now man because now I could see somebody else's kid doing something and go to the parent 
parent don't believe you, now they ready to fight you. You know what I'm saying? But back in the day, yep. man, if, if somebody came to your mom and dad and said, hey, you need to talk to your son, they're going to thank you, bring you in the house and do what they need to do. And it, it was going to straighten you out. You know what I'm saying? But it's just it's just a different time, man. It's like everybody just worried about me and my family. You know what I'm saying? And that's why, to me, that's why communities are falling apart, man, because people don't look out for the communities, man. They're looking out for their house, and they, the, the community can be burning around around them, man. As long as they crib ain't on fire, they fine with it. You know what I'm saying? And and, and that's not, yeah. you know, that's not where my, you know, that's not how I operate, man. You know what I'm saying? That's why I do some of the stuff that I do, man, because they say, man, Grand Bay ain't much to a lot of people, but yeah, you know, Grand Bay made me, so. Hey. <laughs> <clears throat> you know, hey, so, uh, man, you, you, you know who next? Ooh. Hey, you you know who next, Walt? The coolest, the the coolest and baddest man. <laughs> hey man, cross, you... four, cross four states. <laughs> who, who you talking about? Hey, you say cross four states. Cross four states, man. Look that we know of, man. It, it, it can it can expand more than that, man. Your dad. Thank you, man. <laughs> Come on, man. You know what? Hey, Building Minds, Bill's Community Podcast is about families. It's yeah. about yeah. families. It's about businesses. It's about military. It's about leadership. But it's about people telling their story. A lot yeah. of times when people do podcasts, they always want to have A-list people. And I don't have a problem with A-list. And I'm only using the jargon that is used by the world. Yeah. They want to have people <clears throat> whose names are normally in bright lights and across TV screens and movie screens. Mm -hmm. Avon and I are using people that we know, personally that we know. Some have started businesses. All are community leaders in their own right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that is the basis of building minds Bill's Communities Podcast. So come on, Walt. Don't delay no more. Talk about that. Man, my pops was, he was different, man. <laughs> he was different, you know what I'm saying? And and I mean, I remember, you know, being little, man, I just like, you know, my son used to be, man, I used to want to be wherever he was at, you know what I'm saying? You know, you couldn't tell me, you know, he wasn't the, he wasn't the best thing smoke, you know what I'm saying? And, and of course, man, everybody got flaws and, 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 you know what I'm saying? And, and I, man, look, I fought a lot of this stuff, man, up until my adult, I mean, 45 years old, man. And I still fight some different stuff, man. But it's like, you know, I had to go back and look at it. Me and my brother talked the other day and I'm like, you know, it was like, we you can sit back and look at positive, like feel a certain way. But I thought about it, I'm like, man, my daddy, his dad passed away when he was 16 years old. You know what I'm saying? So he he basically the oldest brother. You know what I'm saying? So it's like who really taught him how to be a husband and how to be a daddy and how you know what I'm saying? So he he spent his whole life trying to figure that out. You know what I'm saying? So I had to get to a point, man, where you know I love him to death, bro. You know you know how different he is. You know what I'm saying? He, <laughs> yeah. He, hey, when the Temptations wrote that song, boy, they must have been talking about my father. <laughs> yeah. He, 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 he was a real old man, but I, like I said, man, I, I wouldn't trade him. You know what I'm saying? Because you know you you can learn you can learn a lot from people that's doing the right thing, and you can learn a lot from people that's 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 tripped up. You know what I'm saying? And, and 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 I learned a lot from him, man. Just, you know, just trying to, you know, I don't judge him, you know what I'm saying? But I try to not make the same mistakes he made, man. That's but right. you know what I'm saying? Like you say, he 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 was one of the coolest. Now he, he income tax time, now he was gonna have the flies ride in Grand Bay now. <laughs> he, was, he, was, he was cool cat, man. But like yeah. I say, man, I wouldn't I wouldn't trade him for no for nobody else's daddy, man, because like I said, man, everything that happened to you in life, man, happened for a reason. God gave me him for a reason, so I'm I'm cool with it. That's right. God gave him you, and God gave you him, and that's yeah. your dad. That's just like my dad. You know, uh, <clears throat> don't say nothing about the LeBaron Le Horns. 
<laughs> you know, uh, you know, yeah, I'm a man of God. I'm just saying, don't say nothing about my dad. Yeah. yeah. Right. And and yeah. uh it, it's you know, and I I've I've seen this and done this kind of like with my cousins, you know, on, on my dad's side, my my you know, my paternal um side cousins and stuff, man. And you know, sometimes we joke about parents and stuff like that, but I love my daddy. Yeah. I love my daddy. My don't talk about my daddy because your daddy ain't perfect, right? If if I if I <laughs> could pull something out of that and get yeah. to people, don't talk about my daddy because your daddy ain't perfect. Yeah. So and I'm not perfect as a father to our kids. Exactly. But my daddy, right. that my daddy, your daddy, all of our, our fathers, they gave us the best that they knew at exactly. that time. And I thank I thank God for my dad. Yeah. I, I do. Yeah. I wouldn't change him. When trade wouldn't do none of that, but okay. he did. He showed me one of the, one of one of the most important things that my dad showed me before my dad became a be, a believer. Listen more than you talk. Yep. Listen. Well, you got two ears and one talk. mouth. Yep. That's right. A lot yep. of times we run in our mouth and we can't receive information. Yeah. I don't know about you all, but. I, <laughs> I'm not built that way. I, I can't talk to you and you talk to me and receive what you're trying to give me. I can't. I'm not built that way. Yeah. But, uh, you know, and, and so I, I thank God for my dad and my parents, you know, and, and your mom, man, I meant, you know, she she did a lot of work, man, as a mother. Yeah. Right? She, yeah. She, she, hey, she did a lot of work, man. We're talking about mothers from the 70 era. Yeah, in our community of people that look like us, yeah. they they dealt with more than what our fathers dealt with. Yeah, mm -hmm. because yeah. mothers, mothers are the pillar of the family. That's the central unit, right? Now people say, well, 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 fathers, you know, seed come from father, and, and this and that, and fathers has the responsibility of being the head of the household. That's true, but I can tell you for my household. If my wife is upset or something ain't going right, hey, I gotta get it back in line. Now that might mean I might have to, <laughs> I might have to apologize. I might have to buy some flowers. Okay, right. A little bit. Hey, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yo, hey, I gotta do some getting right, man. So yeah. I, I, I give a yeah. shout out to every mother that has me. <laughs> And give a shout out to my my niece Amaya. She just had my first great grandson, yeah, yeah. my first great I nephew. You yeah. know, seven pounds, five ounces, and twenty one inches, and in, out on Lake of Kansas. And I know yeah. my brother LeBaron is is proud. And and uh, so all mothers, you know, and it's difficult yeah. being a mother. And you know what, brothers, we we don't know how to be a mother. Man, we we cool. have no idea. So what we're still trying to learn how to be good fathers. Them. Exactly. Yeah. That's man, right. My wife, my wife run this house, man. Something happened That's to right. her. They're gonna take everything we got. I don't know who to pay the bills to. I just <laughs> I just sent her the money, man. I don't yeah. know. I don't know what's going on. Yeah. So man, I, I definitely feel where you're yeah. coming from with that. Yeah. You know? Uh so hey, talk about Miss Faith. Oh man, my mama. Yeah, man. She, you know, any anytime you marry into the forest family, man, you gotta have your hat. You gotta have your hat on tight, man. You know, <laughs> you, especially to marry my pop, man. So, you know, man, she, she, she. I mean, she got married young, so yeah. I mean, it was a lot. You know what I'm saying? She and me and her talk now, man. And she, she, you know, she called me one day, man, and she was like, she like apologized. I'm like, what you apologizing for? She was like. You know, she's like, I tried to be the best. I'm like, let me hold. I said, let me stop. I said, you don't have nothing to apologize to me about. You know what I'm saying? Because her and my dad, you know, they they divorced when I was 10. Yeah. So it was me and my brother and my sister, uh -huh. you know, and she was just trying to, she was just, just being by herself, man. She was just trying to learn how to be a woman. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, I think, I think she married my daddy when she was 14 or 15. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, you don't have to apologize to me because you you still learn. I mean, you don't ever get to a point in life where, you, where you're not learning. And when yeah. you get to that point, something ain't right. That's you right. know what I'm saying? So I don't care if you get it at 
20, 30, 40, 50, 60. But you know what I'm saying? She getting it, man. And 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 I told her, like, don't apologize to me because you did the best you could with what you had. That's right. You know what I'm saying? So now it was our turn to make sure you straight. You know what I'm saying? So, but yeah, me and my mom relationship, man, is, you know, she'll she'll call me. You know, I actually I t- I take her to her uh her uh she had physical therapy on Wednesday. So I normally take her to therapy. She didn't have it this week, but but man, the last six months, man, that I've been taking her to her appointments, man, it's like it's like making up for a lifetime of just me and her not being able to be on the same page, man. We talk more, we hang out more, we laugh more. So, man, I wouldn't trade up for the world either, bro. <clears throat> hey, yeah, man. that's who we are. I, I tell you right, what, uh, yeah, I, t- I tell you what, like, uh, I, I had this conversation with my own mother <clears throat> recently. You know, I mean, it was a similar situation when you talking about where she's just talking about everything she was trying to do. You know, I mean, for us, you know, I mean, growing up or whatnot. And I, I, I we, we got to we did doing math and whatnot. And explained, I was like, Mom, you know, you were. You were a mother of five at 26 years old. Yeah. Like you had five yeah. children by by the time you was 26 years old. And I was like, three of them were a year apart. You had 86, 87, and 88, back to back to back. You know what I mean? And I was like, and you was going to college when you was pregnant with me. And and then and I was born on her 19th birthday. Me and my mom got the same birthday. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I was born on her 19th birthday. She already had uh, an almost two-year-old son at that point. And and then right after that, boom, 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 three more. And she finished school, you know what I mean? Got a career, became an entrepreneur, you know, and ran her own business for 30 years. And I was like, you know, you got nothing to be sorry about. All your children, you got out of your out of your five children, you know what I mean? You got one retired Marine. You got one who is a business owner up in Wilmington, Delaware. You have another one who has a business, uh, who owns her own business in Maryland. And I was like, you know, and then you got another, uh, you, you got two more kids. Uh, he's trying to start his own LLC right now for transportation. I'm like, you, you did well. And I was like, you know what I mean? Yeah. You gave us values. Yeah. You taught us how to work hard. You you did the best you could with what you had. You know what I mean? And yeah. thank God for my grandmother and my great grandparents that, you know what I mean? was that top cover, that canopy that, that had that community mindset. Like I see my grandchild struggling. I'm going to step in and give a hand, not, not do it for you, but I'm going to show you how to get to where you're trying to get to, you know what yeah. I mean? And, and giving some rudder steer. So, I definitely, you know what I'm saying, a second, I appreciate, you know what I mean, my mother's, I appreciate your mother for what she did for you, you know what I mean, and, and same for you, Marty, like, we yeah. we definitely need to take a minute to pause and, and think about how hard it is to be a mother, uh, right. and, and, you know, <clears throat> my own wife, you know what I mean, I gotta, I gotta doff my hat to my wife, who's out of my 20, 20, 20 plus years in the Marine Corps, most of it she did by herself, because I was always gone. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and, just just thinking about what they do on a day to day basis while we out, uh, you know, what I mean, working and whatnot, and how they keep the whole house running, you yeah. know, what I mean, taking care of the kids. You come home, there's still dinner cooked, you know, the kids and did their homework, bath, and everything ready for bed and whatnot. You just got to your wife cook. Work up, man. Hey, I don't <laughs> get in trouble, bro. <laughs> hey, hey. Edit, edit that out, bro. Hey, oh man. <laughs> Hey, leave my sister alone, bro. Leave my sister alone, bro. Hey, edit that part. Hey, I told you he cut up. So, hey, so so let's go ahead and talk about. Let's go ahead and talk about Miss Kimberly then. Oh man, Man. you know I might. You know what, Avon? This might have been a segment, man, where we probably should have brought Miss Kimberly on and pushed this cat to the side, bro. And I want to know how how she do. Hey, no, she she went to pick my daughter up. She ain't even here. Now, so ain't <laughs> uh, that's why you wasn't looking behind you after you said that. <laughs> hey, I, told you I, said it, so I knew she wasn't here to hear. Oh, she heard it. She heard it. Oh, <laughs> well, she, she gonna will. hear. She will. <laughs> yeah. Her ears is burning right now. She's gonna be like, mm. you know, I, nah. because I'm, I'm interested because I'm really interested because you know, being in the Marine Corps for those years and also not moving back to Alabama. <laughs> After retirement, I really haven't spent time. I wasn't there like doing y'all, you know, honeymoon phase and when you're dating, then you went into the honeymoon and the marriage and all of that, man. So yeah. Tell us about your 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 wife, man. Your real man. Tell us about her. Hey, man, she 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 getting there. 
Nah, nah, she, she tough. She tough, man. We 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 met, man. <laughs> <laughs> no man, that's that's my that's my that's my baby, man. I mean, she's that's right. You know, I, I went through. You know what I'm saying? I was I was in a phase, man, where you know I I was just by myself, man, and just doing what I wanted to do. You know what I'm saying? Just you know, basically just living. You know what I'm saying? And and when I met her, it was like you know she college, she all this stuff, man. She had a good job at the time. And she was basically like, look, you know, you're a good dude, you know, but you know, I had the wrong mindset, man, because of the way I was brought up, I was just, I was just happy. I wasn't in jail, uh, wasn't locked, you know, wasn't dead or whatever. So I was just basically just happy to be here. But, you know, she kind of lit me and she was like, look, you know, it's more to life than just being here. You know what I'm saying? And, and she kind of pushed me to, you know what I'm saying, to better myself. I mean, she, she, you know, I didn't really go back to college like I wanted to, but, you know, I still got time for that. But, you know, but she she just made me realize where I was wasn't where I had to be. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? It was, she was just a different, you know, she, she was just, first of all, she's just a different type of woman that I ever dated. You know what I'm saying? She was smart, a little nerdy, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, but she, she just, she knew how hard she worked to get the stuff, you know, to get to where she was and, she was like, look, if we going to be together, you know what I'm saying? You know, because I was working two jobs, man, I was killing myself. You know what I'm saying? So I thought that was good enough. But working two jobs, killing yourself, and still trying to figure out what bill you're going to pay this month ain't really where it was at. So, <clears throat> you know, but she just kind of, you know, she didn't just, like, get on my nerves about it, man. But she, like, she just told me, you deserve that. You know, she wasn't really worried about her. She was like, I see how hard you're working. You know, you deserve to have the stuff that you want, man. And she just changed my whole mindset, bro. We we met, man. We we had our first we had our first date in January and we got married in December, the same year. You know what I'm saying? So, and it was like, man, I hadn't looked back. I had to get used to, you know, being married and you know what I'm saying? I, I had a lot of my, you know, a lot of a lot of my daddy ways as far as the way I went about stuff. I didn't like to talk. We're not talking about nothing. I said it was going to be like this. And that's, and I know that's not what marriage is, man. It's, it's, it's yeah, yeah, you say 50 50, man, but it's 100 100 in my eyes. You know, mm-hmm. you give me 100, I'm going to give you 100. And so I had, it took me a while to get to that point, man. But, but, you know, she, I gave her a couple of headaches, man. So, <laughs> so, and I mean, and, and, and she stuck around you know, long enough for me to find myself, man. So, you know, I'm going to be forever grateful for that. Yeah, man. Oh, well, I mean, definitely. I've been, it's great that you, you put that thing in there that you're talking about. She gave you a different perspective on life. So it's something out of your norm that you've never dealt with before. And, you know, yeah. I, 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 I'm not going to ask you what your norm was, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, no, like, I mean like, that's, that's fine, man. I, I just – because of where I came from, man, I was, I, like I said, I was just satisfied with what my life was at the time. And, and I was, I was content with that. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Just struggling, you know, just working from check to check and stuff like that. I was content with that. And and she made me change my, you know, my mindset as far as, you know, that ain't what life is about. And we don't work, you know, just to pay bills. You know, we work to enjoy, you know, have, and, and even to this day, man, all she gonna do is go somewhere. And I'm like, what? Yeah, you, then you take the money and you go. I'm gonna hang out at the crib. <laughs> but, but, but it's just a different, you know. She just, she just made, you know. And then once I had my daughter, man, it was, you know, that that was a whole other thing too. So, you know what I'm saying? I, I I got to a point, man, where I was just, you know what, man, what I'm doing, you know, I'm staying out of trouble. But like I said, I'm just existing. I'm not really living, man. I'm just here, you know. And she, she, she let me know, man. She showed me it was more to life than just living, man. Just existing, you know. It was a lot of stuff out there, you know. I had the potential to do this and do that. That I mean, nobody ever took the time, you know. what I'm saying to to, to make me look at it from that point of view. So you know, what I'm saying that's why, you know, what I'm saying right, no job. We went on our first date. You know, when you're a single dude, you you got your cell phone. You always got some numbers in there that you can, <laughs> that you can call when you get bored. You want somebody to hang out, man. We went on our first date, and I went through my phone and I 
deleted all those numbers out my phone just like that. <laughs> you know, so hey, hey, Mario, that go back to that conversation. I said God take somebody and put them right there where they need to be. That's right. Yeah. And, and boom, yeah. put you put her in your life, and next thing you know, things start to change for you. Shift. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Starting directly right. towards your purpose. Yeah. That's right. So that's such a and, lesson, man. Yeah, man, so let's, let's get into what your, your inspiration was for this uh for this Juneteenth thing, man. I, I want to know what the inception of this was because what I know from talking to y'all, Grand Bay is a small community, but it's a community where everybody knows everybody. And if the, if yeah. you ain't related, you know, what I mean, closely, you related somewhere down the line, or you related by, you know, what I mean, going through experiences together and like, hey, that's yeah. my brother because we grew up the same place, we went through the same thing. You know what I mean? We had the same, you know, we were same homies. Everything was the same. Like, yeah, hey, yeah. I was struggling. You were struggling. We were struggling together. We went through everything together. We family, yeah. we, we closer than some people family are, you know what I mean? That, that, that are blood from the same mother or father, you know, type stuff. Yeah, so, that's right. You know yeah. what I mean? That, this, this town seems like, you know, it's got like one red light, you know, may, maybe, maybe two. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's used to, it used to just be stop signs. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> yeah, they 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 hooking the red lights up now, but it was yeah, it was one, it was two main highways, man, and uh-huh. everything else was dirt road. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. teacher, we were talking about. He's like, it ain't really no downtown. He's like, <laughs> no, no, it's, <laughs> hey, it's, hey, we we ain't going downtown. We going over there. <laughs> <laughs> we going yonder, you know. What I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, nah, man, it actually started out, man. Um, actually, uh, like right before COVID started, man. You know what I'm saying? I, I had some, I had some downtime. It was actually like a joke between one of the guys that got in it with me. You know, I was he he I was posting stuff on Facebook, and I I was just hearing about Juneteenth, you know, because they don't teach it. You know what I'm saying? They didn't teach it in high school, so just started hearing other people talk about it. So I started posting stuff on Facebook, and he called me out. He's like, uh, I was talking about the 4th of July. And he was like, oh, man, you, you just found out what Juneteenth was. He's like, I'll tell you what. He said, you do something next year. And he said, I'll jump in with you. So it started out as like a joke. But then, you know, it turned into the more I heard about it, the more I was like, man, I'm not the only one. You know, it's a lot of people around here that don't know anything about, you know, you know, our people as far as when we were liberated. You know what I'm saying? We, we, we always celebrate the birth of the country, you know what I'm saying? But you know, nobody celebrating the birth of black folks. You know what I'm saying? We we wasn't we wasn't free when America was free. So I didn't I didn't know that being young. But once I started looking at it, I was like, you know what? I reached out to him and I was like, look, I said, I'm dead serious about it. And so it just, man, and I I, I put it out to the community, man, and people gravitated to it like I was giving away something, man. People started cash happening us. You know this, 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 and the, and the first year, man, we had so many people out there, and it, it, I couldn't even. I was so nervous, man. I couldn't. I, I sat back and I looked, and I couldn't even almost enjoy myself. I was so nervous, but I looked, man. I don't know, man. Between the course of a day, little bitty Grand Bay, man, it was might have been a thousand people out there in that spot. You know what I'm saying? And when I sat back, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I felt. You know, like okay, well, you 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 did the right thing. You know what I'm saying? This because more people need to hear about it, and the more we put in it, the more people gravitated to it, man. So, you know, <clears throat> we didn't really do anything this year, man, because one of my guys, the one one of the guys that went in with it passed away, and I think in December. And then another uh, Regina, you know, she had so much stuff going on in her family, man. So I didn't feel right by trying to get people to stop dealing with the stuff they were dealing with, just to, to organize that stuff for this year. So we kind of held off on it this year, but uh, hopefully next year, man, we're going to go back to war for us again. So. Yeah. Community leader. Community <laughs> starter, cool. man. You know, Community um, innovator. You that's know right. I mean? that's, that's better. Community innovator. And that's, that's why we are talking with Mr. Walter Forrest today, because He's a man, he's a husband, he's a father, a brother, a grandson. He is a productive citizen of Mobile, Mobile County, Alabama. And he saw a deficit in the area of history 
families and young people or even people that are older not knowing the history of African-American people in this country. So that's why it's important that we talk about history because first of all, we need to know history and we definitely don't want bad history to repeat itself. Yeah. So these are the things that we need to know. And, um, you know, I, I got I got to get a shout out, man, to your brother and to your <laughs> sister, man, because I, I ain't trying to get no text from your brother. You know what I'm saying? Uh, 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 you no know what I'm saying? I don't want no smoke. You know, uh, I definitely want to um, uh, say rest in peace to Pastor Lehman Forrest, which is uh, your, your uncle and uh, my cousin. Uh, also, he was the uh, pastor of uh, Mount Pisgah Missionary Baptist Church in Grand Bay, Alabama for about 35 years, right? Yeah, 25. And, uh, 25, 25. And, so, now, I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad you brought him up. Man. I know you I know you're checking the clock and everything, but let, let me let me talk about that cat for a second. That's right. You know, yeah, you know, like I said, my, my pops was was all over the place when I was in high school, man. And and man, my uncle really bonded over sports. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Oh so, yeah, he rode tight yeah. all the way. Yeah. So so he he didn't have any kids of his own, man. So I played football and basketball in high school. And man, this dude followed me everywhere. I went. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Yeah. Take your time, yeah. man. That's right. Yeah. Hey, hey, Avon, he's uh he was a pillar in that community. Yeah. 35 years as a yeah. pastor of the church. Yeah. Man. Like, like, yeah. And you know, he stepped up, you know, what I mean, he stepped in for you when you needed him to. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he was a role model for you. Um yeah. obviously something you want somebody you wanted to emulate. Uh and oh, then yeah. just think yeah. about what his presence <laughs> at your games did for you. You know, what I mean, yeah. somebody taking interest in your in your your athletic uh, career and whatnot. That yeah. did a lot for you. Yeah, man, and he 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 did, man. And like I said, it's it was different. You know, you come out. Now, you know, I used to look for pops, and you know, that was you know he probably wasn't gonna beat that. But. <laughs> 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 oh, but, but but real real was gonna beat out there. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And you know he. You know, he I, I learned a lot from him. I, I couldn't really do it the way he did it, you know what I'm saying? Because he was just, you know, strictly just, you know, by the Bible. And and, and, I, and I, I respected that, man. But I, I just, you know, I wasn't there. I still ain't there yet. So <laughs> I, I try to, but I, I try to take a lot of what, a lot of what, you know, a lot of what he stood for and, and incorporated in what I do on a daily basis, man. You know what I'm saying? I. I, I I can't I can't walk in his footsteps, man. But you know, maybe I can walk beside his footsteps. You know, that his, his footsteps are too big for me to feel, yeah. man. But you know, I, I can walk beside him and, and do my part, man. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, just like what, man. I mean, Grand Bay is, you know, like I said in the beginning, you know, it ain't much to some, man. But you know, that's 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 home, bro. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? That's that's where I came from, and that's why I try to always. You know what I'm saying? I, I go back, man, sometimes. Mark, I ain't gonna lie, man. It, it, it make you sad sometimes passing through that, man. Because it just ain't like it used to be. That's right. You know what I'm saying? And it, it just, so, I mean, but it's not, it ain't like it can't be, though. You know what I'm saying? So that's why, you know, we got you, you know what I'm saying? You shed light on it. That's For right, real, man. And, and just, you know, I always <laughs> try to go back and just do something positive, man. And even if, you know, I try to go buy school supplies or, or whatever. You know what I'm saying? I don't broadcast a lot of stuff, man. Even if it's paying for a kid to play park ball. You know what I'm saying? Because I know I couldn't afford it. My mama couldn't afford for us to play back in the day. That's right. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I take everything that I've been through, all the struggles, and then I, I try to flip it, man, because I, I know I know how parents feel that can't afford this. I know how kids feel when their parents can't afford it. So I try to take both of those perspectives. Like, man, if I got to buy some school clothes, school shoes, whatever I got to do to make it easier on somebody in that community, man, I'm willing to do it. So, yeah, man. Okay. So, this has been Builders Minds, Bill's Community Podcast with Avon and Mario. Hey, we gave shout outs to certain people in that live in that area or no longer live in the area of Grand Bay, Alabama. I want to give, I want to give a shout out and a salute to everybody of the community of Grand Bay.
you know, I, I love y'all. I thank y'all for what y'all have poured into me, you know, uh, accepting me when I, you know, when I left Murphy High School and went down to Mobile County, you know. How, uh, how you end up down there? <laughs> oh, hey, man, That's look. That's 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, hey, man, look, I'm, I, hey, oh, man, best move of my life. I'm going to say, I, look, I have been trying to get down there for years. Oh, you figured out a way. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But I want to just say, man, I'm, I'm so proud. I'm so proud of the community of Grand Bay. And Grand Bay stand up. Cause you're on the map now. Yeah, I know you've been on the map for a very long time, but I'm talking about you on the social media map because we're talking about you. So if you're going to view this podcast, hopefully that you'll view it for the entirety of it. That you don't just click and then we get those likes, you know, and then we look at the analytics and all that stuff. No, hopefully you actually get to listen to a modern day hero in Grand Bay, Alabama. He's trying to help change the community, right? By influencing it, the youth and young adults and our elders. That's what he's trying to do. And he's trying to, he's doing that through being a living example. So, hey, Walt, we appreciate you, man. Uh, and you know, we, you know, you and some other guys, man, we all talk about this. You know, Pastor Hayden now, currently of uh, Mount Pisgah. Uh, Anthony Bill, Anthony Lark, you know, Joseph Edwards, you know, Charles, um, <clears throat> we we talk about Charles Roll, you know, yeah. uh, your brother Darnell, my brother Barry, you know, we got Walter Phillips, man, we, we got a host of people, Lorenzo Gordon, he's doing great things out in Atlanta, uh, Ronnie, you know, he, he you know, Kenny Jr., a, a lot of people, man, we doing some great things, man, and uh yeah. We're, we're going to help. We're going to pour back into our community. We're, we're going to mm -hmm. do that. We're not saying no. We know other people are doing it, but just know, Grand Bay, we're going to pour in and other men and women, we're going to pour back into the community where we came from. Yeah. You got anything, Avery? Yeah. Man, I say, hey, hey, well, it was a pleasure, you know, man, talking to you, catching up and getting to know, you know what yes, I mean, sir. what makes you who you are, you know what I mean, the influences in your life that, you know what I mean, molded you or whatnot. And this, yes, I feel like, I feel like, no, man, I got some Grand Bay family now, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> you know, hey, I definitely appreciate it, man. Hey, all good. I mean, God man. bless you, man. Keep doing what you're doing. Hey, don't, hey, if your wife come back in, you know what I mean? I ain't going to say nothing, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? But, hey, you ain't going to say nothing neither. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we want to thank y'all for watching this podcast and do something good for somebody because it's the right thing to do.